Well, here we are again. I know y'all are excited to see me. I'm excited to see you too. It's pretty awesome. Like I said, I'm getting kind of used to this uh, recorded messages thing. Um, hopefully, we're getting towards the end of this thing and, and we can get back to how we all would prefer to do our services. But for the time being, we're going to make do with what we got. And for today, this is what you got. So congratulations. I'm going to be coming to you from uh, the book of Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Um, read a, a couple of verses here, two or three, and try to uh, offer whatever encouragement I can. Again, just want to say a great big huge thank you to everybody that's making this happen, everybody that continues to come in and do these messages. Nathan, for being here to uh, record these and, and put this together and get it out to you. Um, it's, it's been some trying times, but at the same time, it's, it's been a lot of areas of this um, situation that have been blessings. Um, and part of that has been able to see our people at work, uh, to see people with the desire to serve, to continue to find ways to minister and continue to find ways to serve one another. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for that. And um, one of the other things that's been a big, huge blessing is, um, of course, I've, I've been continuing to work, thankfully, prayerfully. Um, I, I'm, I'm blessed in that manner, my, Amanda and myself. Um, we haven't missed any work at all. Um, because of the COVID, but um, at the same time, I know I know many, many people have, um, but what that's led to is more time at home, not being able to go places, and um, that's been kind of a blessing, and I hope and pray that you've taken advantage of that opportunity to, um, to make the most of it, to um, use it as an opportunity to grow closer to God, to grow your faith. Um, it's been a great opportunity for that, and I hope you've uh, taken advantage of that opportunity. So, uh, Colossians chapter 3, starting in verse 1, and I'll read the verses and then pray just to kind of do things a little bit different because I've gotten in the habit of doing it the other way. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Where Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Father and our God, we do come to you to say thank you again for this glorious day that you've created. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to uh, minister uh, through this technology. And I just pray that each one listening will... Um, hear this word, Father, and be encouraged by it, and maybe even um, their spirit be grown by it. Father, I just pray that you would continue to guide us and direct us as we try to feel our way through this thing. And, and uh, as hopefully, Lord, we're looking at the other side of it, I just pray that you continue to help us to make wise decisions, Father, decisions that are um, pleasing to you and, and honoring to you. Father, again, I, I pray that you would... Uh, Take these words and use them to grow the folks that are listening. Father, we thank you. We love you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. It's easy in times like these to lose our focus. It's easy in times like these to allow our environment to control our actions or to control our attitude or control our mindset. It's easy to get lost in, in the turmoil of everything that's going on. But our instructions is, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are in Christ. Don't, don't be self-seeking. Don't be um, caught up in the world and the things of the world and the things going on in the world. Christ is still seated at the right hand of the Father. That hasn't changed. God is still God. He's still bigger than anything in this world. Don't lose sight of that. The further this thing goes and the longer we, we, this drags on and it carries on, um, the more likely some of us are to get caught up in it, to get caught up in the fear, um, to get caught up in the world aspect of this, the politics and all the other nonsense that goes with it. It's easy to do the longer this goes because what we're going through becomes the norm. 
You know, they say it takes 21 days to break a habit or create a new habit. 21 days. So if you've been doing this for the span that we have, it's easy to develop new habits, which may not be good habits. You may get focused on something you don't need to be focused on. You may lose sight of something you need to be focused on. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, at the right hand. He's still seated on His throne at the right hand of the Father. Listen, that hasn't changed. And your focus can't change. You've got to remain focused throughout the duration of this thing. Um, we don't have any idea how long it's going to last. We're hoping it's getting close to the end. I'm really praying that we're, we're about the other side of this thing for the most part. Now, I understand it's not going to just go away and it's not, we're not going to wake up one day and it's gone. That's not the case at all. But I'm talking about the fact that we can't join together in, in corporate worship right now. I'm hoping we're just about to the other side of that. I'm, I'm praying that we are. Um, I'm, I'm hoping in the coming weeks that we're able to come in here and use this camera to record a message that says, hey, see you Sunday. Um, but right now we're, we're not doing that and, and I'm not saying that. But while we're in this time, please, don't lose focus. Don't lose sight of the things you're supposed to be focused on. If you have been raised with Christ, if you are a Christian, if you have a working, living, breathing relationship with the Father through the Son, then you need to be focused on the things that are above, not the things of this world. You don't need to allow this world and, and all the things that are going on with this pandemic to cause you to lose your focus or shift your focus. You need, you need to stay focused. And you need to stay focused on the things that are above. Seek the things. Look for, reach for, grasp for, grope for. Get after the things that are above. Continue to chase after the things that are of God and not the things that are of this world. Set your minds on things that are above. Where, where does your mind go in times like these? Set your mind on things that are above, the things of God the holiness of God, the righteousness. Continue to set your mind to think on the things that are godly. Don't let your mind get distracted. And it's easy to do. And the longer this thing goes, the easier it is to lose our focus and to start to, to let our mind wander and to let our mind venture off to things that, that we, shouldn't, we shouldn't be concerned with. God is still God. Christ is still seated at the right. It's still their throne. It, it, God is still in control. Above all that's going on, none of this is bigger than God. None of it. Keep your mind focused. Look at this. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Don't get caught up in these things that are on this earth. And the longer it goes easier it is to lose your focus. Keep your focus. Keep looking towards the things. Keep thinking on the things. Develop habits that cause you to seek God, not stray from God. You know, some people have already broken the habit of going to church. Kevin spoke on this subject a little bit yesterday. Uh, this will be Tuesday's message, so that'll be Sunday, two days ago. We can't get comfortable with not gathering together. We can't. And, and it's a big possibility for some people. We get our minds set on things. We get used to having that extra day on the weekend where we don't have to get up. We get used to all the things that we're able to accomplish on, on the Lord's Day. You can't let that happen. I can't let that happen. We've got to keep our focus. We've got to keep our minds set on the things of God, the things that are above and they're above for a reason because they're a higher priority than anything in this world. You've got to keep your mind set. You've got to intentionally make the decision to pursue the things of God. It doesn't come natural to you. It doesn't come natural to me either. I have to do the same thing. I have to get up every day and make a conscious decision to fight this battle again. And again, and again, it's a spiritual battle. And it's never ending. You have to stay in it. You have to stay after it. You have to keep your mind focused. Listen, the reason you have to do that in verse 3, for you have died, 
Your life is hidden with Christ in God. You catch that? For you have died. You don't exist anymore. Your life is in Christ. So my desires and my pleasures and, and my wants are, are gone. It's about what God wants for me. It's about what Christ wants out of me. That's where my mind has to be. That's where I have to stay focused. And when I'm focused on these things, it doesn't matter what the rest of the world's doing. You know, we're under a microscope all the time anyway, but times like these, people are watching. Your, your unchurched friends, your, your unsaved friends, they're watching. How will he or she respond to this? Now what are they going to do? They're watching. What a great time to witness. What a great time to minister. What a great time to show that you believe what you say you believe. And it's proven by your actions. Look at this. You have died. Your life is now in Christ. So it, it's, not about, it's not about you. It's about Christ. It's about what God desires for you. And what God desires for you is for you to keep your mind focused on things that are above. For you, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Pursue. Go after Look for, dig out, constantly seeking the things that are above. Listen, when Christ, who is your life, because you are dead, right? And your life is in Christ. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. That's our ultimate goal. That, that should be our, our life's goal, is to see Christ face to face. That should be our goal, is to spend eternity with our Creator. That should be our goal, and every decision we make should be influenced by that goal. Whether or not we get wrapped up in all the chaos and craziness that's going on, whether or not we begin to seek and pursue the things of this world or to think on the things of this world, should be that decision should be made based on our ultimate goal. And as Christians, our ultimate goal should be to spend eternity with our Father. That should be our life's goal. That should be your life's goal. And, and if it is, then that's going to influence every decision you make. And every decision you make will be to seek the things that are above, will be to pursue the things that are above, will be to think on the things that are above. Listen. If you look at verse 5, Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, I'm not going to read all of this, but oftentimes... Um, not, I won't say a, a few times in Scripture we come across lists. There, there'll, there'll be lists, and, and a lot of times it'll be in pairs of two. There'll be a list of things to stay away from and a list of things to lean on or go after or pursue or seek. There's one of those lists right here in Colossians chapter 3, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing, um, for time's sake, but I want to point out something to you. Verse 5, put to death therefore. So for everything we just said in verses 1 through 4, Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 4, if, if you've been raised with Christ, then seek the things that are above. Set your mind to things that are above. You have died. Your life is in Christ. When Christ appears, you will appear with Him in glory. Therefore, put to death what is earthly in you. Put to death what is earthly in you, and then you get a list. And, and, and that list is, is full of things that you should put to death, full of things that you should avoid, full of things that I should avoid, that as a Christian we should, we should avoid these things. Put to death. Make sure they're dead. You remember uh, the story of David and Goliath, right? Pretty, pretty popular story, uh, pretty well-known story from Scripture, David and Goliath. In, in that story, David is the young guy, the little guy, and Goliath is the giant. The giant is, is um, antagonizing or um, aggravating or intimidating the uh, Israelites. And, and David comes along and goes, I'll, I'll fight him. And he gets his stone and he puts it in the slingshot and he slings it and he hits him right between the eyes and the giant falls. And you know when the giant falls, what David does? David runs over to Goliath, pulls his sword out of his sheath and cuts Goliath's head off. You know why? He won't deal with that tomorrow. <laughs> 
Now, David had to face some other things down the road, but you know what he never faced again? Goliath. He never faced him again. You know why? He cut his head off. Listen, put to death, therefore. Cut the head off of these things. Look at this list. Go through this list. Put these things to death. Get rid of them. Get away from them. Get it over with. Cut the head off of them. You may have to deal with something else tomorrow, but if you'll cut the head off of it, you won't deal with that again. David, David faced many things after he faced that giant. He did. He, he, he did a lot of stuff. But you know what? He never faced that giant again. You know why? Cut his head off. Put it to death. Put these things to death. That's verse 5. If you'll drop all the way down. Now, I'm not skipping it because it's not important. You need to look at that list and you need to understand what's going on here. But for time's sake, um, I don't want to get into that realm of um, some of these guys that have been 45-minute messages. Not calling no names, but y'all know who you are. I've done, yeah, I ain't going to be that guy. So I'm going to go on down to verse 12. And it says, Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. And he gives another list. So put to death these things and put on these things. You know what this is? It's a measuring stick. If you want to know where you stand, if you want to, now this isn't, I'm not saying the gospel is about you following rules or taking a list and checking things off. I'm not saying that. But these are pretty good guides for you to know where you stand, for you to see where you're at in your spiritual walk. They're pretty good guides. Put to death these things. Make sure you've put those things to death. You ain't fooling with that. And then it says, put on then these things. And it gives you another list. Listen, it's just a checker. It's just a guy. It's just a ruler. It's just a little marker. It's just a little way for you to look at it and see where you stand. Again, the gospel's not about checking things off a list and making sure you are or you're not. That's not the gospel. But these instructions are for you and I. Because he started off in verse 1, If then you have been raised with Christ, if you are a Christian, this is what it'll look like. And in verse 5 he says, Put to death these things. And in verse 12 he says, Put on these things. Hey, it's just a list. It's just a, it's just a great marker. It's just a great place for you to look and maybe see where you're at to make sure you're not focusing on the things of this world, to make sure your focus, that the things you're seeking are of God, to make sure that the things that you're thinking on are of God, that you haven't gotten distracted somehow. Listen, every one of us are one or two bad decisions from going right back to where we came from. We are. We are, every one of us. So it's important that we check ourselves. And in this time right now when we don't have that gathering together and the accountability that comes with that, it's a great time to keep yourself accountable and use God's Word to do it. Not because I said it, because it's what the Scripture says do. Why do you think these things are written out here? Things to put to death versus things to put on. It ain't just filler. Put it to use in your own life. Thank you all for your time. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, again for this opportunity, and I thank you for everyone that's tuned in, and I just pray many blessings on them. I pray, Father, for your guidance and direction to continue, and I just pray, Father, for you to continue to show us your face in this time of need. In Jesus' name, amen.